Reverend Professor, Bishop Professor Vincent Yahweh. Welcome, sir. In no particular order, we'll introduce the deans here present. We have the Dean of the Faculty of Social and Management Sciences, Professor Godwin Obo. We have the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, Professor Daniel Ihu Omoregbe. We have the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Education, the immediate past inaugural lecturer, Professor Alexandra Esimaje. We have the Dean of the Faculty of Basic Medical and Health Sciences, Dr. Rafael Usiosefe Irunse. We have the Dean of the Faculty of Law of Bensi Dahosa University, Dr. Joseph Ekwe. We have the Dean of Students of Bensi Dahosa University, Professor Mabel Ehigiato. And we have just joining us the acting librarian of this university, Dr. Mrs. Rosemary Odiachi. We have the director of our pre-degree programs and chairman of the ceremonials committee, Professor Taidi Ekrakene. Some of our guests here present. First on our list is a member of the University of Ibadan Alumni Association, Emeritus Professor Raymond Elaho. Welcome, sir. We have also members of the University of Ibadan Alumni Association. If you're here, please just stand up for recognition. Thank you very much. We have here a very close friend of the university, Reverend Professor Osage Akpata of the University of Benin. You're welcome, sir. We have the former Dean of the Postgraduate School of Postgraduate Studies of Bensi Dahosa University, Professor Bami Dele Sani. You're welcome, sir. We're glad to have you here. We have the former li uh, librarian of Bensi Dahosa University, Mrs. Grace Sani, you're welcome, ma'am. We have the former director, Bensi Dahosa University Edo Studies School, Professor Mrs. Esohe Omoregbe, you're welcome, madam. We have here in our midst, the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Benin and Emeritus Professor of Bensi Dahosa University, Professor Awulime Anao. You're welcome, sir. We have here Architect Patrick Uwa Igbinoba. You're welcome, sir. We also have a distinguished professor from the University of Benin, who is a very close friend and associate of Ben Dahosa University, Professor Eddie Iragbe. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. We also have the former dean of the Faculty of Engineering of Ben Dahosa University, Professor Frederick Edeko. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here, sir. We have 
the retired president of Edo State Customary Court of Appeal, Honorable Justice Peter Isibo. You are welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. We also have former acting registrar of Bensi Dahosa University, Barrister Mrs. Eunice Umokike. You are welcome, ma'am. We also have the Iyase of Bini Kingdom, Chief Sam Igbe. You are welcome, sir. Obukia, sir. We are glad to have you here. Thank you very much. If I have not called your name, it is not because you are any less a personality. It is just because your name has not reached me. As soon as they come, I will announce them. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay, I just have this now. We have retired research director. I think that should be at the Inst Nigeria Institute for Oil Palm Research and a visiting professor University of Benin, Reverend Emmanuel Esosa Odige. You are welcome, sir. And he's here with his dear wife. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you for being here with us this afternoon. Without further ado, I have the singular honor to respectfully invite to the podium the Vice Chancellor and Chairman of the Senate of Bensi Dahosa University, Professor Sam Gobadia. The President, Bensi Dahosa University, Vice Chancellor, past and present, here present. Deputy Vice Chancellor, Principal Officers of the University, Provost Deans and Directors, our inaugural lecturer for today, all previous inaugural lecturers here present. My Lord Spiritual and Temporal. The ESA of Benin, distinguished professors, distinguished guests, all other teaching and non teaching staff of the university, students of Benson Idahosa University, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to the 13th inaugural lecture of Benson and Dahosa University. Yes, please clap for that. We are a rapidly growing university. I told myself as vice chancellor to double the number of inaugural lectures before the time before I serve at my time as Vice Chancellor. We are almost there. This is the 13th. Um, God willing, we're going to hit the magic number very soon. We are here today to, to hear from someone, in my view, a distinguished scholar, Professor Mark Irgile, who has today uh, turned, as an orator, turned an inaugural lecturer, a great scholar, a great Christian, a hard worker. So it's my pleasure this afternoon to present him. And I'm going to invite the registrar to help us read the citation for this very distinguished scholar as we prepare to listen to him. And I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful experience for everyone. The registrar, please.
ladies and gentlemen, the topic of the inaugural lecture today is the poet prophetic voice in the wilderness of our time, an oral, literary, and biblical prognosis to be presented by Professor Mark Osamagbe Igile, BA Ibadan, MA Ibadan, PhD Ibadan, Professor of African Oral and Biblical Literature. I have the singular honor to now request the inaugural lecture to kindly rise and step forward as I read his citation. Professor Mark Osamagbe Igile was born on the 13th day of July 1968 in Benin City, Edo State, to the family of late Mr. Damian Ayowie Igile of Orio Ozolwa in Uhude local government area, Edo State, and late Mrs. Catherine Maria Igile Ni Enadege of Igun Oromo in Oredo local government area, Edo State. He attended Siloko Primary School, Siloko, from 1975 to 1979, and went to Igwabazua Grammar School, now Edo National College, for his secondary education, which he successfully completed. Having cleared his papers at a sitting in the West African Examination Council, he proceeded to Edo College, Benin City, for his higher school certificate from 1985 to 1987. He got admission to read English in the Department of English Faculty of Arts, University of Ibadan, in 1991. He emerged as the best graduating student in literature. Upon the completion of his youth service in 1992, he went back to the University of Ibadan for his master's degree. And in the 1994-1995 academic session, he graduated again top in the class in the literature category. With a departmental commendation on his dissertation entitled The Song and Poetry of Egogo, the blind minstrel of Benin. Meanwhile, as a master's degree student, he secured a job with Sketch Press Limited Ibadan as a features writer and rose through the ranks to become the features editor and member editorial board of the organization before he resigned in 2000. In December 2001, Professor Mark Igile was ordained the pastor in Living Spring Chapel, Ibadan, and he became a full-time pastor in the ministry, serving as national pastor, training, and manpower development. Part of the schedule of his office was the coordination of the Bible School, Organization of Leadership Summit for Ministers and Leaders, including ordination procedures, and replication of the Bible College and leadership training centers in the different branches of the ministry across the country. He was Dean of the Bible School, Christ International College of Ministries for 10 years, that is from 1996 to 2006. On August the 1st, 20, 2006, he took up an academic appointment in the Department of English, Redeemers University, and rose to the position of senior lecturer in the 2013-2014 academic session. Meanwhile, in July 2010, while still at Redeemers University, Professor Mark Igile attended a conference on indigenous knowledge in the age of globalization in Nairobi, Kenya. It was organized by the International Society for Oral Literatures in Africa, where he delivered a paper entitled Beneath Folklore in the Eyes of the World. At the end of that conference, Professor Gigi Dara, 
who was also in attendance, suggested the need for a Nigerian version of Isola. I take that again. At the end of the conference, Professor Gigi Dara, who was also in attendance, suggested the need for a Nigerian version of Isola. In December of the same year, the Nigerian Oral Literature Association was inaugurated with Professor Gigi Dara as the pioneer president and Professor Igile as the pioneer administrative secretary. Professor Igile has approximately 50 publications to his credit, including books, chapters in books, and journal articles, most of which are foreign. He is the current external examiner to the Department of English, Faculty of Arts, and Bruce Ali University. He belongs, to the several, he belongs to several professional and academic associations, such as Nigerian Folklore Society, Literary Society of Nigeria, American Folklore Society, African Literature Association, Nigerian Oral Literature Association, International Society of Oral Literatures in Africa, Society of Biblical Literature, Institute for Benin Studies, and Association of Nigerian Authors, among others. Our inaugural lecture for today resumed at Bensi Dahosa University in October 2014 and became a full professor in October 2019. In his eight years of sojourn at the university, Professor Igile has been in management and in the membership of Senate. Apart from being the university orator, he has served as director of academic planning, director of consultancy, coordinator of IJMB, director of JUPEB, and dean, faculty of arts and education. He is currently the director of part-time and sandwich programs of Bensi Dahosa University. Professor Mark Igile, whose area of specialization and research interest include cultural communication and performance criticism, African and oral literature, folklore and biographical studies, literary stylistic and criticism, and creative writing and, and Bible as a literary text, is Reviews Editor, Umewe, Journal of Benin Studies, Canada, Deputy Editor, Nigerian Journal of Oral Literatures, Lead Mentor, Mentoring Cubicle, Nigeria, and Vice Chairman, Above Only Press. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Mark Osamagbe Igile is gracefully married to Reverend Mrs. Sharon Titi Lokbe Igile, who is head of publication at CGMI Global Office, and the marriage is blessed with choicest children, Majesty Efosa, Reni Reigns, Dunamis Osaiti, and Adoration Maria. Vice President, Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you this afternoon the 13th inaugural lecture, lecturer of Bensi Dahosa University, Professor Mark Osamagbe Igile. Welcome, sir. the Chancellor and Archbishop of Church of God Mission International, the President, Benson Indahosa University, the Vice President, Benson Indahosa University, the Pro Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, the Borsa, the university librarian, provost, dean, and 
of faculties and directors, professors, heads of departments and units, members of senate and congregation, distinguished guests from other universities and establishments, members of the NOLA, members of UIAN, Institute for Bini Studies, Mentoring Cubicle Nigeria, my family members, members of staff of the Faculty of Arts and Education, distinguished students of the Faculty of Arts and Education, all other staff and students of Bensini Dahosa University, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal, the Yasser of Bini Kingdom, Chief Sam Ibe, members of Church of God Mission International and other churches represented here, Bini Pastors Association, Pastors Wives Association, Empowered Christian Men Fellowship International, Christian Women Fellowship International, Mighty Men of Verlo, Gentlemen of the Press, Ladies and Gentlemen. Between, between July 27, 2010 and today, November 8, 2022, there were 12 inaugural lectures delivered by 12 professors of note from this great university. Out of this, two of the lectures were from the Department of English Studies. Today, it is a prophecy fulfilled and a rare privilege for me to join my esteemed colleagues in the department who have performed similar rituals before me to deliver at the departmental level the third inaugural lecture with the title, The Poet Prophetic Voice in the Wilderness of Our Time, an Oral Literary and Biblical Prognosis. For those of you who attach value to numbers, three is used very significantly and symbolically in the Bible to represent the resurrection day, the day of power manifestation, and the performance day of prophecy. Technically speaking, the story of the inaugural lecturer today is not different from that of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that at the end of this lecture, every prophecy from God for every member of this esteemed audience will find expression in the mighty name of Jesus. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, let me begin by saying that the lecturer of today is a product of prophecy, a child of destiny. This inaugural lecture is indeed a fulfillment and a performance of prophecy. I recall that growing up as a child and gradually evolving into the teenage circle, I was always fulfilled, staying in the midst of my seniors and playing with them. I would ask questions and they would gladly respond. They were encouraged by the strength of my poser and the commanding confidence with which I made my points. I can never forget in a hurry the instances when I made my way into the team play sessions of my elder brother, Pastor Sota Osaon Ayowien Igile, then the, the later part of his teenage years. On such occasions, I would make all of them sit, and I will stand and start telling Bible stories. As strong as the narrations were, it was the dramaturgy and the ecstatic embellishment that were the reference points. My oral presentation of the story of the Good Samaritan is so vivid to me. I remember pacing from one side to the other, playing different roles of different characters as I will dramatize John chapter 10 from verse 30 to 37 
of the reverse standard version of the Bible. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by the other way. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, and I will continue until verse 37, when Jesus said, go and do likewise. I will stretch my hands to my senior brothers and his friends and tell them, go and do likewise. They will stand and clap for me with excitement. Little did I know, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that the journey to oral poetics, performance criticism, and biblical literature was about to start. My journey into the field of oral and biblical literature. As an undergraduate of the University of Ibadan in the late 1980s, I was always looking forward to the vacation time when I would see my parents and embark on a few holiday jobs. On one of such journeys, I traveled with my head of department then and lecturer, Professor Isidore Okwebo. It was in the course of the journey that it began to open my eyes to the possibilities of oral performance and folklore stories. It then drew my attention to the relative depth of Benin oral literature and what value my contributions would make. The three-hour ride with Professor Okwebo significantly influenced my research interests and the choice of my long essay topic which I wrote on the myth and poetry of the Igwe Ehema Festival of Urios Zolwa, then the state. The Igwe Festival, a major cultural phenomenon among the Edo people, later became the subject and object of some of my academic publications. In the course of my postgraduate studies in Edo, I came in contact with one of the finest historians in Africa, currently in the diaspora, Professor Uyi Lawa Uswalele, who, quite impressed with the creative work I did on the Igwe Festival, drew my attention to the research reservoir in Egogo Alagebo, a famous blind mystery in Benin City. For some decades, the man Egogo Alagebo played the traditional flute at the popular airport road post office Benin City. With the help of my father, Ebaba, Damian, Ayo Weren Igile, I was able to conduct several interviews with the musician. And in 1994, I came out with an original work that attracted official commendation by the Department of English, University of Ibadan. The dissertation entitled The Song and Poetry of Egogo Alagebo, The Blind Mystery of Benin, has since become an intellectual background for an academic journey in oral literary studies. When I returned to the Department of English University of Ibadan in the 2005-2006 session to pursue a PhD program Professor Nessin Fashino, a distinguished scholar and a minister of the gospel himself, fascinated by my impressive performance in oral literary studies and pastoring ministry, counseled me on the need to pursue an academic career that would blend with my oral literary background and exposure. And of course, with the ministerial inclination as pastor and teacher of the Bible. He further observed that not much work has been done on the literary stylistic analysis of the Bible and noted that I will make all the difference as a scholar if I explored some folkloric features in the Bible. And encouraging and guiding me into the field of Bible as literature, he took a step further 
by exposing me and asking me to teach his course in the university. And by the grace of God, by 2011, he had successfully supervised and completed the supervision of my doctoral thesis entitled A Literary Analysis of the Books of Proverbs and Ecclesiastics. The choice of Proverbs and Ecclesiastics was to further buttress the relationship between oral literary studies and biblical criticism that I am deeply into and rooted in. Between Mayway in August 1, 2006, I got a teaching appointment in the Department of English at Dumas University. By 2007 through 2008 session, I had already introduced three courses in the area of Bible as literature, namely introduction to Bible as literature, Bible as literature, and then Christian biographical literature. In 2010, I attended two international conferences in Kenya, you know, that focused on oral literature and Bible as a literary text. And um, the first conference which held in Mubasa was organized by the International Society for Oral Literatures in Africa. Professor Gigi Dara and other scholars were also in attendance. When we returned from the Mobasa conference, we decided to have our own Nigerian version. And between the 6th and the 9th December 2010, we held the inaugural conference of the Nigerian Oral Literature Association with Professor Gigi Dara as the pioneer president and yours sincerely as the pioneer administrative secretary among other executive members. I served in this capacity under the leadership of Professor Gigi Dara for 10 years. In 2013, at Redeemers University, I got two appointments that boosted my scholarly profile in oral literature and Bible as a literary text. The first was my appointment as the pioneer coordinator and later acting head department of Christian religious studies. The second was my appointment as the supervisor of the first two master's degree students in my department. When I was resigning from the Redeemers University in October 2014, I had just completed the supervision of the first two postgraduate students, namely Egbeyemi Ifeoluwa, with a dissertation entitled The Poetry of Pastor Adeboye's Praise Songs and A.T. Mary Emmanuel, who wrote on society and audience in the songs of Oko Akban. The first major assignment that welcomed me to Benson Idahosa University in November 2014 was my active participation in the National Universities Commission Resource Verification exercise for postgraduate programs in my department. With the successful outcome of the NUC accreditation or visitation, we have been producing quality scholars in English and literature. I am grateful to God Almighty for making me strategic to this great move, either as the head of literature in a unit, or as director of academic planning, or as dean of the Faculty of Arts and Education. This month, we are expecting another resource verification visitation, this time for our PhD programs. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have over the years enjoyed the privilege of mentoring students and younger colleagues in oral literature and biblical literary criticism. Mr. Vice Chancellor Sam, the inaugural lecture of today will be delivered by an expert in the field of oral and biblical literature having been actively involved in research, teaching, and training 
in the field for over 16 years consistently. Today's inaugural lecturer is an active oral performer, a folklorist, a poet, a musician, a storyteller, and a literary Bible stylistician. The dynamics of an inaugural lecture. It was Professor Aderemi Raji Oyelade who once asked a set of rhetorical questions in a similar contest like this. According to him, for what is the spirit of an inaugural lecture if it is not the dare and the confessions of work done or yet to be done? What is an inaugural lecture if not the exercise of decimal contribution to scholarship? And what is an inaugural lecture if not the unfolding of challenges and triumphs, testament and appreciation of collaborations and other form of support. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, inaugural lectures are nothing but the ceremony of arrival and return. Inaugural lectures are the rise of endings. Only if such endings are seen as the provocative tone of new departures, because each sense of completion is indeed an entry into another beginning. Inaugural lectures are glamorous festivals of pontifications and the amplifications of silent and tedious moments of study before a critical audience who unfortunately cannot ask questions. For us at Benson Idahosa University, there is now a structure that is not only predictable, but commendable. The roster has been prepared for all professors who are here to present theirs to do so. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I want to thank you for this tradition that you have established. And I am immensely and profoundly grateful for the opportunity given to me to deliver mine today. Thank you a million times, Mr. Vice Chancellor. In the next couple of minutes, I shall be taking you through an epic journey into what I profess and that which has been the focus of my teaching and research. I will be highlighting through songs, poetry, performance, proverbs, and aspects of the Bible, my contribution to scholarship, my area of specialization, which is African literature, oral poetics, and Bible as a literary text for over 16 years. In the process, I will be situating my teaching and research experience within the context of our social political environment. Again, Mr. Vice Chancellor, my lecture is entitled, The Poet, Prophetic Voice in the Wilderness of Our Time, an Oral, Literary, and Biblical Prognosis. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I'd like to begin by having a recourse to a biblical reference and then two poems from my collection entitled, Strangled Seasons. John chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. Scripture says, And they ask him, What then? Are you Elijah? I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now to my poem, Song of Defense. I shall sing a song, here at the crossroads, 
We have flower breeds and decision fights. The wheat of life pushes emotions away to the pit of reason. And all that sinks is the road to the crossroad. The crossroad of human frame. The human frame of the crossroad that chants me here. Yea, I shall sing a song and my song shall wake the dead. The next poem entitled My Story. My Story, wrapped up in the cutting of many towns and villages across the stages of the sage. My Story, enveloped in the womb of discoveries and experimentations across the different forests of books. My Story, sealed in the saintly breast where angels like desk officers dance across the ritual line of prophecy. My story. Here comes my story. From the scripture, it is clear that I am here to speak about the environment in which I am located. I am here as a voice equipped not only to establish the truth that we are really in the wilderness of some sort, but also to explore ways of escape and progress. The first poem buttresses the fact that I have been singing in diverse ways from the beginning of my career till now and beyond. The second poem reveals that I am here to tell a story captured in poems, songs, proverbs, and in the saintly breast of the Bible and the church where prophecy finds full expression in pronouncements and declarations. The potency of poetry. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, poetry is conceived in this inaugural lecture within the context of, poet, of folklore. That is, proverbs, songs, folk tales, chants, incantations, prayers, having no regular rhyme scheme and dealing with the verbal aspects of literature. This kind of poetry which some scholars refer to as traditional oral poetry is transmitted primarily by word of mouth and learned by imitation or example. Isidore Okpewo, on his part, and this is quite important, advises that we must abandon the false impressions that poetry must necessarily have to do with words of order in which they are arranged. According to him, a group of measured lines which describe a situation is simply verse and may have very little to, you know, that is poetic in it. On the other hand, it is possible for a combination of music and movement, dance in a performance that has no word at all and is still very poetic due to the sheer force that we feel while observing it. The essence of true poetry lies in the power to appeal to us and strike us. Dear Mr. Vice Chancellor, the poet inaugural lecturer before you is a performer, a raconteur. In the course of my research, I have tried not only to draw the relationship between poetry and songs, poetry and proverbs, but I have also gone ahead to situate the folkloric and biblical resources at the basis of our national transformation. In an earlier research on the poetic and performance value of Igwe Song Test, we have stressed that theater and performance still have a lot to show of their original mysteries, rhythm that are embellished, you know, mysteries, dynamism as reflected in the structure, ceremonies, rhythms that are embellished in conventions and ritual, form, ritual forms. To properly understand Igwe songs and their contest, I have stressed the need to locate them in actual performance, bearing in mind the ceremonial and ritualistic implications. These songs are not written to be read, 
but to be chanted openly in an audience. For instance, and I'm sure that our friends will help us at this point, the performance of Ewere songs. From the dawn to the dusk of the particular day, different kinds of songs are performed. I mean, during the Igwe festival that we are also about to enter into. For instance, the youths who come with their ceremonial Ewere leaves move from one house to another. As they approach a house, they sing. They be It is important to stress that the poet can, at the scene of performance, deliberately change the details of a poem in order to satisfy his desires. The Edo oral poet, for instance, who haven't performed the above or any other one, you know, in a particular setting, and discover that the inhabitants are not ready to reciprocate in cash or kind can decide to use his poetry as a weapon of attack on the ungenerous unge household. In order to launch this attack, the poet singer has at least two possibilities. He may either change the tone of his voice to an elegiac one, or with a fast, dramatic movement, you know, of the hands and feet, sing. That means the stingy one that little by little should one be stingy, little by little. The stingy one, little by little, should one be stingy. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, a prophet is a spiritual seer. Someone who sees beyond what the five senses cannot even, you know, can produce. I'd like to say that what a prophet can see Others will look at him or her strangely. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the wilderness of our time, an oral, literary, and biblical perspective. Permit me to beam such light on the poem entitled The Casualties. This poem forms a strategic part of one of my publications and is critical to this lecture. By foregrounding the historicity of the text and relating it to the configurations of power, society, and ideology in a given time, the lecturer is able to explore, and this is very, very critical, not just the literary and artistic quality of the work, but perhaps more importantly, its prophetic value as it relates to the Civil War period of 6 July 1967, to 15th July 1970 and our contemporary times. Excerpts from the poem, and then we discuss briefly. The casualties are not only those who are dead, they are well out of it. The casualties are not only those who are wounded, though they are weight barrier by installment. The casualties are not only those who have lost person or property, hard as it is to grow for a torch. 
that some may not know is not there. The casualties are not those led away by night. The cell is a cruel place, place sometimes a heaven. The casualties are many and a good number well outside the scene of ravage and wreck. They are the emissaries of rift. So smoke in smoke room they hunt abroad. They do not see the funeral pies at home eating up the forest. They are the wandering mistress who, beating on the drum of human heart, draw the world into a dance with rights it does not know. And then on and on. We are all casualties of the war. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished guests, honorable colleagues, and our great students of Benson in Daosa University, what is striking here is not just the contemporary nature of a poem that is over five decades of existence, but perhaps more importantly, the prophetic depth of the creative work. It establishes the fact, part of which I have been making, that the literary person, in this case the poet, beyond being a language expert, is substantially a seer who can project into the future and pontificate accurately. To a very large extent, some of the issues raised by the contending forces in the Nigerian Civil War episode are still finding expressions in the socio-political structure of our country today. Why lives are being cut short by senseless killings, there is still no form of developed system of injecting accountability mechanism, process that will make all states and local governments answerable on budgetary matters. Similarly, within the context of JP class casualties and the current tides, it is possible to agree with Dixon that there is no clear blueprint for addressing the developmental issues in Nigeria. It is quite clear that those who boasted of making Nigeria ungovernable, if they didn't get what they anticipated, are now overwhelmed by the unprecedented social, political, and economic crisis presently plaguing Nigeria. Those political gladiators obviously got more than their outbursts. They are the contemporary warmongers who, like J.P. Clark puts it, started the fire that they cannot extinguish. Those selfish politicians precipitated the violence and then went into hiding. The bold ones among them are now playing the stage instead of leaving the stage. Today, people are caught up in frenzied drama of hatred. Citizens who once lived together in peace and love have suddenly become bitter enemies and malicious ones. The phenomenon of Boko Haram is becoming not just a threat to the continued existence of the Nigerian state, but indeed a time bomb. This gang of faceless criminals has succeeded not only in painting the country black in international affairs, but also in making the entire nation a shadow of our former self. In a situation where a religious set or a or an ethnic group, or even a political clan is holding the entire nation to ransom in a country where those who produce the resources do not have access to them, in a country and in a context where families now live in fear, not knowing what might happen next, we have all of us become casualties of a kind of war. To what extent can oral literature, the Bible, and folklore heal the land? Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, at the level of oral, literary, and biblical criticism, I have tried to reflect and explore how my scholarship can benefit the outside community. 
literature, and folklore must transform the society. The Bible and the pulpit must change the land. When these are done, the scholar, the performing artist, or the poet prophet, in my view, will have changed the wilderness into a green land and the desert void. We have a song, a melody of healing. In a research that we carried out, we observed that in a continent like Africa, that is riddled with social, economic, and religious disequilibrium, diverse forms of poverty and leadership dislocations, there is an urgent need for all stakeholders to have recourse to aspects of African ideology and spirituality on the one hand, and on the other, the Bible, and indeed, the essence of Christian religion. Sustainable development is synonymous with wisdom, and this dynamic quality is pronounced in the African experience and the Bible. Our leaders need to listen and act, not to emotional or situational outburst, but to the words of wisdom which are operational in the Bible and in our African essence. Apart from the research we carried out on women and storytelling tradition, another study was conducted to examine the role of storytelling in the moral upbringing of the Nigerian youth. Being a verbal act used in traditional African society for entertainment and deduction, its usefulness in inculcating in children values and cosmological beliefs of traditional African societies cannot be undermined or underplayed. It was discovered that the moral laxity and permissiveness that characterize today's Nigeria could be traced to the inability of parents to instill moral education in their children and world. One of the major vehicles through which this education could be brought to children or the younger ones is oral narrative. The study submits that the perversiveness of moral laxity among youths in the country may not be unconnected with the laws of this traditional tool of moral education. Hence, the need for its revitalization. In another research, we carried out on the poetic, proverbial, and spiritual content of a Rwamba, a collection of songs by Ivie Betty Uwa Igbinoba. We noted the timeless relevance of the superioric status of the Oba of Benin, and we found this critical to the study because they help to locate within the folkloric John the argument that the Benin monarch's uniqueness has implication for the overall well-being of the people and entirely the country. We concluded in our study that Nigeria and indeed the entire world development, we experience a radical and pragmatic twist if monarchical institutions like the Benin example we just given are accorded the rightful place. The way out, therefore, is that a proper understanding of what has always existed will guide our structuring of a new system. To get out of it is not to throw away the old, the traditional values, or to embrace only the modern value. It is a combination, a combination of the traditional and the modern. This then points to a realistic union of both the traditional and the modern to ensure the optimal use of both resources for the good and growth of all. The transformational and healing power of the Bible church for contemporary Nigerian society. We have argued in an earlier research in 2007 that the church-based pulpit or the performed Bible why it shares some structural features with the conventional theater is a potent instrument of leadership development and social transformation. Why using biblical standards in analyzing contemporary issues, it provides solutions to the challenges in the society. 
The pulpit is particularly symbolic of the pulpit is particularly not symbolic of a money generating venture. It is not a business enterprise. However, when the lead actor plays well his part, the empowered audience rises up to his responsibility of ensuring that the performer does not die on stage, that the light does not fade out, and that the play goes on. Contribution to knowledge. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, African oral and biblical literature are faced with at least two basic problems, relative scarcity of relevant reading materials and the fact that most available works, especially those authored by critics who have orientation towards Western theories, are believed by many to be fraught with contestable assumptions. To some degree, like Ademola Da Silva and Gigi Dara and others, I do share these sentiments too. The apparent growing concerns foreground some of my critical works on Africa, oral and biblical literature. They are my modest efforts at correcting apparent wrong assumption. Contribution to knowledge is at least a two-way process. Capacity to break new ground in one's area of specialization and the ability to facilitate accessibility through published scholarly works. I have consistently drawn attention through my numerous publications to the poetics and the vitality of our indigenous cultural expression, the literary value of the Bible, and how African experience interact and interrogate sacred texts with a view to making our society better than it has always been. Apart from the specific contributions made at the Redeemers University to the development of Bible as literature curriculum and the eventual setting up of the Department of Christian Religious Studies and advancing in Indahosa University, particularly in the coordination of the literature unit of the Department of English Studies and the advancement of the postgraduate studies, it has been a privilege for me to be one of those very few that we are instrumental in the setting up of Benson Idahosa University Center for Edu Studies. Thank you. Three years after we formed the National, the Nigeria Oral Literature Association, we came out with the first issue of the Nigerian Journal of Oral Literature with Professor G. G. Dara as editor-in-chief, Professor Chegun Adekoya as the editor, and a few of us, a few of us as deputy editors. It is a thing of deep satisfaction for me to see the journal emerging as a voice to be reckoned with in oral literary studies. I am also full of joy to see the Institute for Bini Studies rise to becoming one of the major research platforms for cultural studies in Nigeria today. The Institute, with the pioneering leadership of Professor Uyi Lawa Usuanlele, Professor Egosa Os Osagai, and Aiko Obobafo, among others, and currently being coordinated by Princess Ivye Uwa Igbinomba at the executive level, and then retired Justice Isibo at the board of directors level, I mean, with, and with some of us in the executive council, has continued to grow in structure, impact, and in the attraction of international grants. The International Journal of the Institute, Umei Wine, Journal of Bini and Edo Studies, published in Canada, and which I am honored to be its reviews editor 
from inception to date is a major research boost to the development of Bini and Edo language, history, literature, and folklore. Mr. Vice Chancellor, it will not be out of place to make some recommendations in this lecture. From this discussion so far, the following recommendations are presented with a sense of responsibility. There is need for all stakeholders to have a round table conference to discuss the present and future of the Nigerian state and the critical place of the minorities. We cannot shy away from the contending issues and expect peace to reign. This, perhaps, is one of the very few ways to avert a recurrence of the bloody Nigerian civil war. In resuscitating the African oral artistic tradition in contemporary Nigeria, there is need for the traditional rulers and titular heads in their various capacities as custodians of tradition to, as a matter of urgency, encourage the revival of oral narrative in different forms in their different respective domains and communities. The government at both state and local levels should see to the revitalization of the art of storytelling by incorporating oral delivery of traditional tales and stories into the school curricula. There is need for government and corporate organizations to give adequate recognition to the oral artist in our environment. Such recognition and validation will not only give the necessary impetus for self-development, but we also help to strengthen and spread the message of morality which our cultural ambassadors communicate through the medium of folk technology. There is also the need to introduce Christian biographical literature as a general studies course in our universities. Professional storytellers can also be commissioned to go around the schools, especially at the primary level, to narrate important tales or pupils with a view to producing morally strong future leaders that we will all be proud of. There is the need to actively effect a dialogue between the Bible and African ideology, particularly as articulated in its folklore and proverbs. There is the urgent need to revamp Mr. Vice Chancellor the theology program at Bensini Dausa University. Theology is one of the cardinal aspects of the founder's vision for this institution. We have realized that of medicine and agriculture with the ongoing strategic discussions with the All Nations for Christ Bible Institute International on possible partnership and other collaborations being explored the future looks bright for theological studies in this great citadel of learning. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for me to begin to wrap up. I have tried to account for my activities as a construct of the literary discipline with special interest in oral literature, folklore studies, and Bible as a literary text. I have, from the standpoint of the poetic and the prophetic, been able to share a few thoughts in my area of specialization and as it affects our contemporary society. The message of this lecture is unambiguous. We are in a wilderness of socio-political dislocation, a slippery platform of economic disequilibrium, 
a near combustible cubicle of religious intolerance, a theater of moral decadence and value crises among others. In the midst of this chaotic environment is the poet prophetic voice of hope, the declaration of assurance, and the proclamation of a certain prognosis for the current overwhelming dilemma we have all found ourselves in. The healing voice is in our cultural values. It is in our folkloric essence and in the proper ecstatic application of the Bible. The secret is in the resuscitation and appropriate contextualization of our cultural songs, salutations, monarchical establishments, poems, stories, festivals, and the pragmatic church. As a progressive stride from the institutional link between literature, orality, and the sacred text is the crucial place of African ideology and spirituality. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there is a critical sense in which the African traditional institutions and oral narratives and philosophy can be harmonized with the Bible in such a way as to precipitate national and continental transformation. Until this is done, the wilderness season will continue to sing a desert song in a terrain that was once familiar but has now gradually become a strange land. I sincerely thank God for what he has turned me out to be, a scholar poet of a prophetic kind, a folklorist with an orientation in biblical criticism, an oral performer with a dimension of pulpit dynamism, a mediator between the cultural ethos of African ideology and theatrics of developmental spirituality, a literary stylistician, and a critic of the multidisciplinary brand, all rolled into one to become, in a very significant sense, one of the priceless creatures that Professor Ayo Banjo in his 1981 inaugural lecture pre predicted for products of the Department of English University of Ibadan. Thankfully, I am a proud ambassador of the department. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, please permit me to end this lecture Permit me to end this lecture with a few stanzas from the poem that I love so much. And that poem is in the line is in line with this particular inaugural lecture. Because I am a poet, I will present it poetically. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hair of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Perfect submission, all is at rest. And in my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story. This is my story. Praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story. 
This is my story, praising the Savior all the day long. Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and great students, I thank you for your listening attention. My prayer for you is that on the day of your celebration, you will be alive and present in Jesus' precious name. Let me use the next five minutes or so to make a statement on the acknowledgement. Almost all, or most of the guests here, your names are in my inaugural lecture. So I encourage everyone here to obtain a copy of the inaugural lecture. That is why this acknowledgement that would have taken 20 minutes will now take only five minutes. It is my privilege to say a very big thank you to the Chancellor, our mother. I also like to say a very big thank you to our president and the head of cabinet for the various opportunities given to me to shine. I like to appreciate God for the lives of my parents, Ewawa Damian, are you wearing Igile? And my sweet mother, Mrs. Katrine Maria Igile, both of whom have gone ahead of us. My mother will always sit close to me to read at night. And my father will say, if you don't have a PhD, don't tell me you are a scholar. Don't tell me that you are literate. I'd like to say a very big thank you to the Vice President of Benson Dawson University, and I appreciate the Vice Chancellor, the Apostle of Doability. Thank you for the strategic guidelines necessary to navigate difficult lines. Thank you for pushing me to the platform of greatness with the eloquent, sonorous presentation of the greatest. Thank you for pushing me. I want to acknowledge the principal officers of the university, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Johnson Oyedeji, the Registrar, Mr. Victor Itoya. I look forward to saying this, and I'm saying it today. I can't miss your inaugural for anything. The Bossa, Dr. Glade Guabara, the Acting University Librarian, Dr. Mrs. Rosemary Odiachi. I'd like to thank everyone. I thank the palace, distinguished professors, and my senior for 20 years in the Department of English, Mrs. Grace Sonny, and I thank the husband, Professor Sonny. All the distinguished professors here, I celebrate you. The faculty heroes, I celebrate you. Vice Chancellor of Redeemers University, Pioneer, second and third, you are celebrated. Faculty of Arts and Education staff and students, I celebrate you. Especially thank Dr. Mrs. Okafo for being a pillar in my deanship as sub-dean. I thank all the members of the Center for Edo Studies, the deans and directors of academic, deans of, and directors, academic planning, I thank you for what you are doing. The BISBAS, IGMB, JUPED, UTC, AAU, Univan scholars in the house, DESU scholars in the house, you know, AAU scholars in the house, I celebrate you. Thank you for your love. University of Ibadan Alumni Association, B. Institute of Bini Studies, I say a very big thank you. To all those who have been instrumental in making me in, in you know, the spiritual world, I thank you all. I thank the first pastor, Pastor Matthew Adedeji, Pastor Femi Emmanuel, I love my pastor. I celebrate Bishop Basi Edohansin, Bishop Sam Mokwede, Bishop Matthew Okpaolo, Bishop Vincent Yahweh, Bishop Matthew Regwe, Bishop Matthew Egwawa, Bishop Festus Ahimien, Bishop Dixon Obahon, Bishop Wale Ajayi, I celebrate you all, and all the bishops in CGMI, I celebrate you. Celebrate the director of administration, the one who is always... <clears throat> I thank you for always encouraging me. The Director of Ministry and the Director of Finance, Reverend Omo Ekato. I thank all the Zona pastors, all the ministers of the gospel in CGMI. I thank you all. I thank especially the ministers in Faith Arena. The presence of Faith Arena in this house is a statement. I thank you. Special thanks to all nations, the Aaron family, 
the inaugural lecturer committee, the ceremonials, the CBSU, EWO, Rejuvenate, PSDC, I celebrate all of you. Family is supreme. Evangelist Helene Onaiwu Adejare, my eldest sister, has been a second mother to me since I was 10. Thank you, Pastor Sota Ayoya Igile, for being so loving and caring and fatherly. Thank you, Pastor Mrs. Patricia Osaro Odige, the Madam BC of the universe. Thank you, the baby of the family, my natural girlfriend from heaven, Mrs. Esosa Ogedegbe, then Mrs. Teresa. You know, so I thank you all. I want to especially thank also my father and mother-in-law, Mr. Olashino and Mrs. Aduni, Aduni, Ajimoto Kono of Blessed Memories. I also have wonderful brothers and sisters-in-law, very dear to my heart. Ms. Bisola Ajimoto Kong, Mr. and Mrs. Olawale Ajimoto Kong, Ms. Idou Ajimoto Kong, and Pastor and Mrs. Abiodun Ajimoto Kong. I miss you dearly, Mrs. Kende Temitokwe Aziz, Mrs. Olajumoke Doga, and Uncle Korede Ajimoto Kong. Thank you, Mrs. Adenike Ajimoto Kong for remaining strong. Sharon, baby, it is all about you. Finally, the sweet story of today may have been impossible, but for the support of my darling wife, Reverend Mrs. Sharon Titi Lokbe Igile, a pillar like no other. Even though this 13th inaugural lecture of the university amplifies my 13th day of birth, I choose to dedicate it to you. Sharon, baby, this inaugural lecture is all about you. This lecture is coming up in November specifically to honor and dignify you as a November born babe. Incidentally, this November also coincides with the 80th posthumous birthday celebration of your mommy, our Monda, Mrs. Aldunin, Ajimotokon. Thank you for all you have been to me and we continue to be because you've got no choice. I also want to specially thank my children, Majesty Afosa, Rainy Reigns, Dunamis Osareti, and Adoration Maria Nubi for your love, understanding, and support. Thank you for making the home front heaven on earth. Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, eminent personalities in the house, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your listening attention. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the inaugural lecturer. You may be seated. Before I invite to the podium the Vice Chancellor for the synopsis of the lecture and the decoration of the lecturer, I'd like to further recognize guests to this inaugural lecture. I have on my list the MD Kokon Conglomerate Limited, Elder Peter Agbon Konkon Ubeide JP. You're welcome, sir. I have the director of Ted Fund Center of Excellence in Agriculture and Food Technology, and the immediate past chairman of the U University of Ibadan Alumni Association, Professor O.J. Abulagba. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. I have the dean of the Faculty of Arts, 
of the Ambrosali University, Ekboma, Venerable Professor Ben Egede. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. We have here the Director of Publications and Documentation Unit of the University of Benin, Professor H. Obiageli Okolocha. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you for being here. We have the Bishop of the Christian Dominion Center, Benin City, Bishop Chris Otaigbe. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. We have the Chairman, Inaugural Lecture Committee of Bensi Dahosa University, Professor Clara Leibo Igeleke. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. We have the Zonal, di zonal Director, National Council for Arts and Culture, Edo Zonal Office, Princess Mrs. Ivie Betty Uwa Igbinoba. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you for being here. We have members of the Institute for Benin Studies here, please. You are recognized and welcome. We have the Director, International Resource Institute, Church of God Mission International Global Office, Reverend Dr. Wilson Onoha. You're welcome, sir. We're glad to have you here. We have the Assistant Director of Administration, Public Relations, Church of God Mission International Global Office, Reverend Alex Idu. You're welcome, sir. We're glad to have you here. We have Reverend Mrs. Mary Aroko, Church of God Mission Faith Arena. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you for being here. We have the immediate past preacher for our convocation service here at Bensi Daosa University and Bishop of the Mother Bishopric Iyaro of Church of God Mission International, Bishop Matthew Egowa. You're welcome, sir. We are glad to have you here. We have the Zona Coordinator beneath Zone 4. I would assume that's Church of God Mission International. Reverend Dr. Ikoko S. E. Williams. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. We have Pastor Desmond Osazua. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. We have Pastor Abiola Osazua. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. We have the Director of Administration Church of God Mission International. Reverend Tari Ikiyo. You're welcome, sir. Oh, okay. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. We have the Director of Finance, Church of God Mission International. He's here with his wife, Reverend and, and Reverend Mrs. Osayande Ehato. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. Oh, yeah, the wife. Yes. His wife is uh, a distinguished alumna of Bensi Daosa University. Please stand up for recognition. Thank you very much for taking care of the director of finance. Help him to manage all the money well, please. We have here comrade Jonathan Ihonde. You're welcome, sir. We have Professor Gigi Dara from Delta State University. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. We have Professor Alex Roy Omoni from Delta State University. You're welcome, sir. We have from the University of Africa, Toru Orua Bayelsa, Dr. Perez Omoko. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. We have Comrade Ola Ologun. You're welcome. We have here the wife of the inaugural lecturer. Much has been said about her, but I still have to introduce her. Pastor Mrs. Sharon Titilokbe Igile. You're welcome, ma'am. And then we have my colleague, the registrar of the Edo State School of Nursing Sciences. Dikin Usayuki Obaseki, you're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have the singular honor to now respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor and Chairman of the Senate of Ben Sidausa University, Professor Sam Gobadia. Okay, thank you very much. Sharon Babe, where is she? This is all for her. This was a great and unique lecture. And uh, part of my job is to provide a synopsis. Allow me. You will all agree with me that this lecture is a thoughtful and fresh perspective on ways of moving our dear country from here to there. The dare being a higher ground. What is implied is this in this lecture is for us to go back to basics and reorder our approach to life. And I want to congratulate you, sir. Please give him another round of applause. The lecture is titled The Post The Poet Prophetic Voice in the Wilderness of Our Time. An oral, literary, and biblical prognosis. The lecture x rays the social, political, and economic landscape and reality of the nation, indeed the continent, from the lenses of literature, folklore, and biblical studies. Why situating the poem entitled The Casualties? in our contemporary times as a basis to establish the prophetic value of the creative writer in general and the poet in particular. The lecturer noted that the various issues that triggered the Nigerian Civil War of the late 60s are still prevalent in our present day social political reality. According to Professor Mark Osama Igile, Nigeria is a wilderness of social political dislocation, a slippery platform of economic disequilibrium, a near combustible cubicle of religious intolerance, a theater of moral decadence and value crisis among others. In the reasoning of the lecturer, the way out is in our cultural values. It is in the activation of our folkloric essence and in the pro proper aesthetic application of the Bible. The solution is in the resuscitation and appropriate contextualization of our cultural song monarchical institutions, integration of ancient and modern, salutations, poems, stories, festivals, and the pragmatic church. The pulpit must be put in its proper perspective and the dynamic place of fatherhood and the creative application of the ancient landmarks giving full expression. Among his numerous recommendations from the lecture, Professor illustrated the need for all stakeholders to have a roundtable conference to discuss the future of the Nigerian state, the need for traditional rulers to encourage the revival of oral narratives in their respective domains and communities, the need for the government to revitalize the art of storytelling by incorporating oral delivery of traditional tales and stories into the school curricula, the active dialogue between the Bible and African ideology, particularly as articulated in its folklore and proverb, the giving of adequate recognition to oral artists, thereby promoting the spread of morality, discipline, hard work, 
and patriotism among our youths and the need to revamp the theology program at Benson Idahosa University. The lecturer concluded by amplifying the critical sense in which African institutions and oral narrative and philosophy can be harmonized with the Bible in such a way as to precipitate national and continental transformation. Until this is done, according to the lecturer, the wilderness season may continue for a long time to come. Senior Professor Mark Igela, congratulations once again for this great and insightful lecture. I will now invite you to step forward as we decorate you with the medallion as the 13th inaugural lecturer of Benson Idahosa University. Uh, come and assist me. Professor Mark he, uh, Osama. <laughs> Osama Be Igile. On behalf of Benson Idahosa University, it is my pleasure this afternoon to bestow on you this medallion as the 13th inaugural lecturer of Benson Idahosa University and to invite you to the rank of senior professors of this university. Congratulations. Congratulations. The family cannot join us on stage. Sharon, were you here when I was giving you a shout out? Okay. Please come, come. Let us celebrate this. Thank you. Thank you very much. The President, Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Bossa, the Librarian, please, would you join the inaugural lecturer for a photograph? All other photographs will be taken outside after the procession. Vice Chancellor, join the, well, the Bossa, please. Why the photographs are ongoing, or oh, I'd like to recognize and welcome the president of Pastors Wives Association, Reverend Mrs. Helen Iyawe. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. I'd like to recognize and welcome the assistant pastor to the inaugural lecturer, Reverend Ulubenga Alege. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. Principal officers, led by the Vice Chancellor. On behalf of the President and the Vice Chancellor, I'd like to thank everyone for being here this afternoon and to wish you a safe onward journey back to your respective destinations. And we look forward to seeing you again as we have other university events lined up. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. There will be enough time for fanfare after the ceremony. I'd like to respectfully invite the president of Bensi Dahosa University to kindly take the closing prayer. Bishop Dr. Feb Idahosa. Let me once again say thank you all for being here today. We appreciate you. And may God's blessings go with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for today's lecture. We thank you for the victory that has been won here today. We thank you for your son and for this mighty, gigantic step into senior professorship. We thank you that, Lord God, grace goes with him and grace surrounds him. As we close today, we ask that you bless all who have come here to celebrate with him and that they also shall receive the grace that has been so bestowed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please, remain, please remain standing as we take the anthems. First with the Benson and Dawsa University anthem and then the national anthem. Be I you the fruit of faith thy fame spread far and wide with hearts of joy we sing of thee stand firm in truth and honesty gold and white for excellence academies with godly Forward we go, forward we go, in good faith, in good faith, God is our help, our God we shall never fail, forward we go, forward we go, in good faith, in good faith, God is our help, our God we shall never fail. Amen. 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 remain standing as the vice chancellor's recession leaves the auditorium in reverse order. Please remain standing, please remain standing.
Thank you all for being a part of the 13th inaugural lecture of Benson Idahosa University. God bless you richly for coming. Thank you. Thank you.